Here we are. Samson Street. This is Helium Comedy Club. And I gotta tell you, I, I don't know any of these people. That guy is, his name is T.I. And I think that may be the son of the rapper T.I. Love the album, The Paper Changer, Paper Trail. Fantastic album by T.I. One of my favorites. I like, I like, I like that type of hip hop that you could dance to. You know, this is Long in the Tooth Records. It's closed. It's Monday. They're closed. Um, but this is my favorite record store in Philadelphia. My old roommate, who uh, I lived with for a year back in like 1999, he owns this record store. He's been here since 2006. Uh, I don't know who the creative genius is behind this, but it's, I, I can, can guarantee you. Nick didn't do it. Or maybe Nick's wife did it. He, I think his wife works at the record store with him. Anyway, it's been a long time since I said this. Going on a scoot. And today, I am riding the scooter all the way from uh, 22nd and Sampson, 21st and Sampson, all the way to my car on 2nd Street. I had a little bit of a day. This is Shake Shack. Pretty good burgers. It's a fancy fast food. That's what I call it. And this is going to be completely unedited. So this scooter ride, what you see is what you get. No cuts, no pauses. I'm going to leave in the ums and the ahs. If I get hit by a car, I mean, it would just be beneficial to... Uh, for views, not for me personally, but all of it stays in. And uh, I do this every like two or three months. I do a scooter ride, and it usually starts in this area of um, Rittenhouse Square, and it usually ends in the area of uh, the Liberty Bell. So I just call it, I call it Philadelphia Unedited. Because you see, like, like if you go to YouTube and you look up Philadelphia, you're going to mostly see videos about the neighborhood Kensington, which is the neighborhood I was born in. And I make videos in Kensington, not, not, not that often, but once in a while, just to show you what's going on in that neighborhood. Um, but Philadelphia is one of the most beautiful uh, area, well, beautiful cities in, in, in the world. And uh, the area I'm in right now is probably one of the fancier spots called Rittenhouse Square. Now, I kind of equate Philadelphia as like a family. We all have, we're all part of a family, right? Me, you, and some of our family members are beautiful and do great things like Rittenhouse Square. And then some of our family members, they're like Kensington, you know? Drugs, that's the problem, you know. Uh, this is Rittenhouse Square. Now, back here, this is where all the uh, bike messengers, this is where they hang out and wait to do their bike message. They get like a text message and then they'll, they'll come pick up a bike message. What's on your mind? Oh. Oh. What do you do with this? The what's on my mind? What's on my mind? Uh, uh. So what are you doing here? Are you like a mind reader? Oh, he's not here? No. The guy with the sign's not here? Right. Holy shit. What's on your mind? Hey, I'll be the guy. Here, I'll do it. There you go. So what's on your mind? My mind. What's when you're men? You, are you really sitting around to tell that joke? You're waiting for the guy to come back to tell him that joke? That's hilarious. That's all you're right. That's how my men. <laughs> that, that, that can't be the joke. That can't be why you're here. To, to, to say what's on my men? No. Why would I tell him what's really on my mind? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. How about this guy just leaving people? Uh, we can't uh, we can't answer what's on our mind. I'll tell you what's on my mind. What the hell is this guy doing? I don't know. What's on your mind? So my mind is, what the hell is that guy doing? 
Uh oh. So right now, Square, like I said, it's a horty torty section. But the thing about Philadelphia, which it makes it so beautiful, is you can't like you, you know, the crazy homeless people hang out in this park too. But also millionaires hang out in this park. So it's it's kind of a worlds collide type thing. See that? That was driving. This is the old Barnes and Noble. Closed down. Just a few months ago. It was the Presbyterian Ministry building. And then uh, it was a bookstore. One of the only few public restrooms in the city of Philadelphia that you could use was at this uh, bookstore. And uh, they closed it. Looks like it's going to become a bar. See, this is the part where I would edit. I would edit this part out. But let's see if you can, oh, you can't really see much in there. Uh. But the bookstore, uh, which was open for a, um, a long time, it moved. It moved right down the street. And they got rid of the big public restroom. That was the big thing about that bookstore. Never, I know I bought, I bought a few books there, but uh, whoa, it was so scary, wasn't it? With your bald head. Um, that was mean. That was mean to me. I, I just, I hate when people act over scared when they see me riding a scooter on the pavement. And yes, I ride my scooter on the pavement sometimes, because people drive like jerk offs in this city, and you're much better off on the pavement but if you if you notice when I see people coming I slow down I slow down a bit this is Cleavers this is right on I think this is 18th Street Cleavers is a pretty good cheesesteak if you're gonna be in Center City Philadelphia you're gonna go get a cheesesteak I recommend Cleavers so how about that there's not many good cheesesteak spots in Center City might be the best one now that I think about it and of course you gotta you know And that guy just smacked his lip because he was riding his right bike on the pavement and my scooter made him get off the bike and he smacked his fucking lips at me. This is the Bruno Brothers. If you come to, uh, if you want to try some, uh, let's go with the Bruno Brothers. Why not? It was established in 1939. Two brothers started this cheese shop at the Italian market. And what they, the one guy like went to Switzerland and got some crazy cheese and he started like, he brought back that crazy cheese to his cheese shop at the Italian market. And what they do is uh, they specialize in like specialty cheeses, specialty meats. And um, the, the, the chain that started at the Italian market, it's here on Chestnut Street. There's several the Bruno brothers. And if you ever want to try, like, get, like, a loaf of bread and a nice piece of cheese, just come here and ask on the workers for a sample, and they'll tell you, they'll tell you about the cheese. It's real good. They also have, like, classy beers ooh, and wines. And if you come here at lunchtime, I used to work right down the street at this fancy clothing store called Boyd's. But if you come here at lunchtime, there's a dude that just sits here and he makes sandwiches. And it's like, what are the sandwiches now? $13.99. Killer sandwiches, good sides, really good food with fine ingredients. That's how I would describe the Bruno Brothers. I would also describe it by using the word expensive. Now this strip here is called Chestnut Street. The store, this stri uh, these, this street is called Chestnut Street. I would edit that out where I babble talking wrong. And um, 
since COVID, the people who shop and explore this area, uh, it's going down. The traffic in this area is going down. This is John, across the street is John Collins Park, and it looks like it's closed right now for a private event. This is Nordstrom's Rack. Love this store. When I used to work at Boyd's, which is a fancy clothing store, 1818 Chestnut, very fancy clothing store. T-shirts are $250. It's just a real expensive place. Greatest customer service in the world. Um, but sometimes I can't afford to buy a $250 shirt. They sell the same shirts at Nordstrom's Rack that they sell at Boyd's. It's just, there, it might be a few seasons behind. By the way, no guns are allowed on the premise. wonder how many people actually keep to that. By the way, I'm doing a walking history tour Saturday, March 22nd at 11 a.m. I'm going to meet at the begin, right behind the Ferris wheel uh, at Penn's Landing, right behind Summerfest. There's a big Ferris wheel. There's only one Ferris wheel in that area. So if you're not doing anything uh, July 22nd, meet me behind the Ferris wheel at 11 o'clock, July 22nd, and I'll take you on a walking history tour of Penn's Landing. The tour is free. Well, it's not free. You gotta give me a tip. Just give me a tip. Now listen, I know times are tough. Uh, minimum wage is $7 and a quarter. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's expensive to live. So if you ain't got no money and you just wanna come and have a good time, just come and have a good time. That's all I, I care, care about. But so anyway, July 22nd, Penn's Landing, Ferris Wheel, 11 a.m. We said it. Okay. This is Market Street. This is one of the busiest streets in Center City, Philadelphia. If you look straight ahead, that's Philadelphia City Hall at the end. This is one of those weird streets where there's a bike lane on the other side of the parking lane. It's about 6.30 at night. The rush hour traffic has died down. Right here. That's the One Liberty Building, which for a long time, that was the tallest building in Philadelphia. Oh, we're dead. Matter of fact, see that green light? That green light is just for people in the bike lane, which is what I was in. Something new in Philadelphia. It's not new. It's newish. Is they do this thing um, where they they like build. Well, this is new. This spot. It's a bar. And that, what they, they do is they just take these spaces that used to be public spaces and they fence them in and people use them as like bars and they're outdoor bars that we use in the summer. I think we even keep them around till right about Christmas time. And then they, uh, they kind of go away. I would say Philadelphia is alive pretty much from, um, I would say, April to December. That's when we're rocking and rolling the most. If you come here in like March, 
January is a real dead time to come to Philadelphia. If you come to Philadelphia in January, if you go to Independence Hall, you don't need to reserve tickets. You just walk in. Nobody cares. You know, it's just too cold. January, February, and March are awful. And then uh, I think we're okay. Pretty much like it's starting to get hot now. Like, we're, we're regularly hitting 90s, but not, not every day. This has been a pretty easy summer. A lot of rainstorms. This is Love Park. This park! If you play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, uh, this is in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. It's called Love Park. Uh, it, it actually had a made -up makeover back in um, about 2019. They had to uh, repave everything, get rid of all... It was like a different... It looked completely different than what it is now. Now they got this this uh, sprinkler system for this... For, you know, like, you're encouraged to play in the sprinkler, walk in the sprinkler, uh, you know, swim in the sprinklers. And that's, that's what they do. They don't have really many pools in Center City, Philadelphia... They, they want kids to use these public... Uh, they're called splash parks. This is one of the most iconic uh, locations in Philadelphia. This is Love Park. Uh, Love Park. Directly across the street from C uh, City Hall. You just come here. And you take your picture with the Love Park thing, right? Actually, no line. No line, no wait at the Love Park statue. Very rare. Uh, you could also come at like any time after like nine o'clock at night, and usually you'll be the only one here, except for all the homeless people sleeping in the chairs over in that spot. Across the street is Philadelphia's municipal building. This is where. Ah, shit. This is where all the uh, municipal workers, like if you work for the water department and you collect tax revenue, you come to this building. Over on this side, this was called the Thomas Paine Plaza. Thomas Paine is the guy who published the document Common Sense, which helped for, which, you know, it was a big... Uh, Oh, I don't want to use the term propaganda, but it was a thing that pretty much said it's common sense that Americans should be their own country and revolt from England. Anyway, uh, you can see like they're, they're they're bashing up the concrete here. Um, there there was like a very big um, play in this area called uh, Your Move, and they recently tore it all down. And they're getting ready, I think they're getting ready to move this statue. And this whole park, this entire plaza, is getting renovated. And they're going to make it um, handicap, more handicap accessible. They have this ramp here. But if you want to go in the front door of City Hall, it's a real pain in the ass if you have a wheelchair. Because you have to go all the way around this side, go up, to go up that ramp. I was at a protest earlier this year for some handicapped people. Is that the proper? I guess that's the problem. There are people in wheelchairs and stuff. And they were saying it's 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 kind of sad that they can't even use the front steps to go in the building. They have to go another 50 yards. And I, I get it. I get it, you know. Uh, so that's the municipal building in this park with, with this, this, this ground. It's going to be completely different. Skateboarders have taken over this land. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know. But it's, I, I saw some plans that it's getting changed. So that's that. I, I got to see City Hall. I haven't been in City Hall in a while. See, that's the thing. Like, I got this, this scooter. And, I mean, I, I have the ability to walk, so I could just pick it up and go down these steps, but it's kind of tough if you're in a wheelchair. I often think about people in wheelchairs. Uh, my grandfather, my dad's dad, 
he lost both of his legs. So I often, like, whenever I see places and I think about wheelchairs and wheelchair accessibility, I think of my grandfather and, like, all the bullshit he had to put put up with because, like, he was handicapped in the 80s, and that's what, back before they even really did anything for people in wheelchairs. They're like, oh, well, you can't come here. So there's been lots of fantastic... Uh, things that have happened like to make things more accessible like if you see this park there's no steps you just walk in it's level ground here's another splash pool at Dilworth Park this is Philadelphia City Hall this space right here is called Dilworth Park you come here you go to the splash pool these go up and down Right here is where they do uh, they do ice skating and roller skating in the summer. In the middle of summer, they turn off the uh, roller they turn off the roller skating ring. They break down the roller skating ring and they expand the splash pool, and that will be ready in the next week or so. But come October, this will be an ice skating ring. Right here, this ramp is SEPTA. This is, if you take, go down here, you could take the Broadway, the broad wet, the broad street line, which goes north and south, or if you go the other way, you go east through, oh, what do we got here? Zumba! There's Zumba in And this is Philadelphia City Hall. This is the world's largest masonry building built for government usage. And they're always doing some type of construction for a long time. They had they had scaffolding up there. Up there is a big statue of William Penn. And it looks like they're cleaning up underneath this part of the, the center of Center City. Hopefully that will be open before Christmas time. I mean, that's just me hoping. I, don't, I actually have no idea. Just because Christmas time, it's a great shot when you when Philadelphia has their Christmas tree at Christmas time, like Rockefeller Center. Uh, it, it's a really beautiful shot if you come walking through underneath that tunnel and see the Christmas tree. Hello, friend. There we go. This is the Wanermakers building. This is one of the first department stores. Matter of fact, if you ever went to somewhere, bought something and brought it back with a receipt, you could thank this store, the Wanamaker store. John Wanamaker, there's a statue of him right across the street. He, uh, he went to a store one day, he bought a pair of pants, and he said, oh, I need a pair of 36 pants. And the guy goes, here you go, $20, 36 pants, or five dollars, a dollar, whatever it was. And he goes, oh, you know what? I forgot. I was on a diet. I'm a 34. And the guy said to him, you know what? No refunds, dickhead. You're on your own. And, and John Wanermaker was like, that's bullshit. People can make mistakes and be able to buy, return something, especially if you were in the store right away. So he uh, he started the he first customer service guarantee with a receipt. You could bring it back if you're not satisfied. And if you look inside the store now, which is now Macy's, there there ain't there ain't no department store like this anywhere in the world. Maybe in New York City, maybe in London. But I mean, look at the look at the stuff right there. Such an amazing building. They filmed the movie Mannequin inside here. They filmed, um, they have so many Christmas time in Philadelphia. I love the summer just because mostly because of the summer. I, the Phillies are in town. I'm in a good mood usually. But in, in, in Christmas time, they have a fantastic light show that lights that whole section up. It's called the, the uh, you can look it up. It's called the Macy Christmas light show or the Wanamaker light show. This is the eagle in the middle 
of the store. So, like most people, you need a spot to meet up in Philadelphia. You say, yeah, do me a favor. Meet me at the Eagle at Macy's, and people will meet you here. It's a good spot. It's air-conditioned. It's in the it's in the middle of the building, so people uh, see it. I have no idea how this place stays open. I can't imagine what the rent is. It's like a historic, iconic location. Look at the molding. Look at the molding in this building. I, you, there ain't nothing like this. There ain't no other Macy's like this in the world. Pause. Yeah, they have some music playing pretty loud, so I just had to turn it off with it. We get through this door, and here we are. This is like the radiator to the store. So the way that it works is they heat the basement. There's like this thing in the basement, like a furnace. And all the heat just blasts. This is like one of the hottest rooms in um, uh, the whole city. At Christmas time, it's, it's so hot. So we're at 13th and Chestnut. You can tell we're in, getting close to the neighborhood. This is like the beginning of the neighborhood. This is like uh, predominantly a neighborhood full of gay, lesbian, LGBT. They have those street lights or street signs have the pride rainbow. So that's how you, you can tell you you're in the... Uh, the Gaberhood. It's, it's, it's actually the name of the neighborhood. We call it the Gaberhood. Cool little thing. They got this church right in the middle of Center City. Check out this church. Kind of, kind of gothic with the spears right there, but not exactly gothic. But a cool thing is if you look. At this cemetery, uh, one of William Penn, William Penn is the founder of Pennsylvania. One of his grandchildren are buried in this cemetery. Uh, we're not editing this, so oh, it looks like that headstone's falling apart. You go back down here, there's like a Actually, this is kind of new. This mural here. I think at the end of the street, there's like a, a homeless shelter back there. So we're going to be heading back down the Market Street. Philly Captain, unedited, hit like and subscribe. And if you want to ever smell piss, you can come down here at that bus station and uh, 11th Street. Or no, this is 13th Street. The 13th Street L stop is the pissiest smelling section of Philadelphia. Hashtag piss. Right here is a, a free museum. Not really a museum, more just a trolley. But that is part of the SEPTA Museum. SEPTA is Southeastern... Uh, Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority and SEPTA is the name of our buses and trains. We call it SEPTA. Okay. And in, inside this store, there is a SEPTA store where you can buy these. Actually, I would rock a SEPTA hoodie. John, I got some. John is a Philadelphia word. John means. John can mean anything. Anything can mean John. Like. This sign, check out this join. Look at that join. Those people are standing under that join. The first circus in America was held in, in this at this space at 12th and Market. This used to be a Wawa. Now there's there's a big story going on in, in Philadelphia that the Philadelphia 76ers want to move to somewhere around this area. Up there a block or so. And I think I'm kind of for it. 
just because this used to be a Wawa, it's closed. There used to be a Raid Aid right down the street, it's closed. So many stores on this side of Market Street have been closed. That like we're used to it. And this is the, our center city, and we ha we have so many vacancies. Starbucks is moving out of here. Uh, Rite Aid moved out of here. Um, Starbucks, Rite Aid. There's a sneaker store that just moved out of here. So it's just like we have amazing architecture too. If you look at this building. Like this black wall has been here for years. And this, look at this architecture. The building is kind of built like a skateboard ramp. And there's a name Robinson on the side. That might be, I don't know exactly what that is. I believe this was, oh, turn around. I believe this was an old automat, which is where you would go get coffee and uh, like pie. You would go to a vending machine and you would put a quarter in and you would get a big slice of pie. This Reebok store has been closed forever. And right here is the new mall. It's called the Fashion District. It used to be called the Gallery. They closed it for a year or two, re redid it, and they changed the name and they called it the Fashion District. The fashion district isn't doing good. The retail space in Philadelphia, vacant forever. Um, retail space, it's dying everywhere. This used to be a fantastic Rite Aid. Might have been an old movie theater. Take a peek at that, right? That just closed recently. There's a Starbucks right down the street. One of the reasons a lot of stores are closing, by the way, there's look, check out these vacancies. Is shoplifting is it is it really um, a punishable crime? Like there's nothing you can go go to a store, grab something, and shoplift, and nobody really will say anything. You won't get arrested. This is an old post office. It was built in the 30s. And back in the 30s, was it the 30s or the 40s? They were they built all these buildings, these magnificent train stations. This was a post office. And due to, you know, nobody using mail anymore, the post office got smaller and smaller. There used to be 50 windows inside this old post office where people would go and buy stamps. And by the end of the end of the post office, by the end of the end of the post office, there was only um, two post office windows open. So that, that tells you how much the post office industry is dying. I was almost shot on this block on Labor Day of last year. You can look that up. Was almost shot twice last year. I'm happy to report 2023. I have not almost been shot this year. Very good. Not every Philadelphian can say that. So what they're doing here is this is all bus lanes only. And it makes sense now because the new Greyhound bus station the new Greyhound bus station is two blocks away. And, um, yeah, it makes sense that you would need all the buses here. Right across the street, this is one of the most magnificent buildings in the city. It's called the Lit Brothers building. It was an old department store. And if you see each of the buildings, they don't look like identical because they weren't identical. The Lit Brothers started 
and they just kept expanding through the street and eventually they wound up buying the entire street making it all their department store and this is the new bus station at 7th and Market there's going to be so many people hanging out here Well, before I show you the new bus station, this is the spot where Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Not exactly in here, this is a replica, but that's the building. Across the street from the bus stop is a federal courthouse. These are all the people waiting for buses at the new bus stop. What a horrible bus stop this is. I feel so bad for these people. Although they could just like, there are benches right up there. And you go right here. This is the spot where George Washington lived when he was president of the United States. You can actually see the foundation down there in the glass, uh, that glass part. Well, shit, if I talk about it, I might as well show you. Not that like, I haven't shown this a thousand times. The thing about Philadelphia is we were, we were a new city that was always expanding, so we never really preserved much of our history. But that is the basement of the house of where George Washington lived when he was president. The way George Washington got that house, there was a guy named Robert Morris, who was one of the founding fathers. He was one of the congressmen or something from Pennsylvania. He was a big time rich guy, made a lot of money off the slave trade. And, uh,. So he had a lot of houses. He, he donated over 200 boats uh, to our, our Navy when we fought the British. So most of the boats that we used were kind of used in slave trade in the beginning of the American Revolution. You know, just some of those sad facts. That's a fun, I mean, is it a fun fact? I don't know about fun, but it's a fact. This is the oldest continuous living congregation in America uh, of a synagogue. Started in 1740. 1740, man. Me and Mrs. Captain were watching this show. It's kind of like American Pickers, but not American Pickers. It was like British Pickers. And it's crazy, like they go to houses and they're from like the year 900. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was nothing going, I mean, there was stuff going on here, but there's nothing from 900 at this time. This is Christ Church Burial Ground. The Founding Fathers, there's five guys who signed the Constitution buried here. Ben Franklin's buried here. Um, Uh, uh, Benjamin Rush is buried here. There's so many people buried here. Yeah, they're doing this type of renovation in my neighborhood with this pipe. I don't know what this is, but this is the grave of Ben Franklin. And that's uh, Ben Franklin's daughter. Across the street, that is the United States Mint. Um, the Pennsylvania Mint is the largest coin-making factory in, in the world. They make um, Medal of Honors, all types of things. They all make them inside this building. You could take tours of the um, Mint 
Um, this is the fourth mint that was put in Philadelphia. The first mint of the United States was in Philadelphia. I don't know where exactly that's at. I think that's like around 17th Street. This is the Art Street Meeting House. This is a Quaker meeting house. Quakers are uh, known pacifists. And um, this is a uh, the second largest uh, Quaker church in the world. The first largest is in South Africa. I'm now on Art Street. Matter of fact, that Quaker Meeting House, that Quaker Church, is called the Art Street Meeting House. If you go down this street, you'll see the house where Betsy Ross lived when uh, she designed, when she made the first American flag. Uh, Betsy Ross, not a hundred percent sure she made the first American flag. Uh, there's no paperwork proving that Betsy Ross made the American flag. Uh, you see, the act of making an American flag when you're trying to break away from a new country, that's called treason. And people, uh, people who perform the act of treason, they try not to leave any documents around showing that they uh, did treasonous things. Um, so there's no real proof. If you read the historical sign, I'll show you. It even show, tells you, like, we're not even 100% sure. She's just credited with making the first flag. Right there. Credited with making the first Stars and Stripes flag. And Betsy Ross, right in that room over there, there was like a window in a window. That's where her parlor was or her kitchen. And uh, the, uh, the story is her, George Ross, who was like an uncle, George Washington, and John Hopkins. They came here for a, a dinner and they talked about how they should design the first American flag. Uh, the one thing Betsy Ross was, was, a, was an upholster. So she said, it's very easy to make this five-pointed star. Like all you have to do is fold a piece of paper a certain way and it, it, you can make uh, a five-pointed star very easy. They, the, the, the founding fathers wanted the uh, first American flag to have six point, a six-pointed star. Betsy Ross changed that. That's like the only thing we really know. Betsy Ross is buried right there in that little cemetery thing. Um, even even her burial is questionable. We're not really sure if that's her body because they didn't use caskets at the time of her burial. The TV show The Real World was filmed in Philadelphia, and when it was, it was filmed here at the uh, Corn Exchange. I think this was a Gerard Bank. Uh, so you can go in here and see where they filmed The Real World. It's a bank now. And if you go down the street uh, a little bit more, another reality TV show was filmed on Cherry Street. And that was called uh, Queer Eye. Fun fact, uh, Karamo, I think that's his name. He is on the new season of Queer Eye. He was also on The Real World in Philadelphia. And he filmed two reality shows for two different channels, only a block apart. I don't know how many people know that, or I don't even know that many people who care about that. This is a meter you use to pay for parking. So the cool thing about this is, so I, I pay for parking across the street. I could just, I can uh, pay for my parking here. But let's say I, I parked back at Rittenhouse Square and I needed to add some time to my, my meter. I could just, I, I'm parked in another zone, enter my zone number and pay for my meter at a uh, different, at, at a different, uh, you know, nowhere near where I am. That's, that's convenient. They also have an app that you can use to up your meter. 
So there's, there's many ways to avoid getting a ticket, but you can also get a ticket because our parking authority is no joke. Yeah, if you ever see the season of Queer Eye that was filmed in Philadelphia, they filmed it. A lot of this stuff happened on this street. There was a girl who had a doll groomer show, a doll groomer doll grooming business and they, they had like a whole like walkway runway show here on this street and I think the house they filmed out of for Queer Eye it had to be the house with the door right so yeah right there so TV history movie history I made a video, and it, it's before I kind of got popular on YouTube, but I made a video showing all the filming locations of Queer Eye in Philadelphia, if you care about that. Check it out. I think it only has like 300 views. So this area in here... A lot of restaurants, a lot of art galleries. If you come down on this street, I think this is 2nd Street or 3rd Street. This is 3rd Street. If you come down here um, on the first Friday of the month, all the art galleries have like art shows. You can walk around, you can drink a little bit of wine, check out some stuff. So where I started was at 22nd Street. I'm now on 3rd. Eh, probably about 2 miles. Probably about 2 miles. The streets in Center City aren't as big as streets in other neighborhoods. This is the uh, Ben Franklin Bridge we're going under. Something Philadelphia does all over the city, not just here in uh, Center City, is this used to be like an old chocolate factory. So what they did is they converted the old chocolate factory into a condo building that's now called the Chocolate Works. Oh, this is the Painted Bride, and it's unnetted. Wow, this is this is amazing. Uh, the Painted Bride is like this art center that was built uh, 25 years ago or whatever it was. Oh, no, I don't know how long ago it was built. But about 25 years ago, they hired this guy, Isaiah Zargar. And, and it, I talked about him several times on this channel. And he makes this mosaic type of art. And um, they're trying to... Um, They were, they were, um, they were trying to sell this property, but then Isaiah said something like, "Oh, it should be a, a monument. Like, it, we shouldn't knock it down. We shouldn't sell it. It's one of my works of art." And the people who owned this building, they're like, "Well, listen, you, you, we didn't know it was a forever deal. We just let you do this. It only took them two weeks to make the the, the art that went around this building." How does something that get, this is what the owner told me, how does something that somebody spent two hours, two weeks on, how does that get more, why does that guy get more say in my building than, the, you know, me? I own the building and the guy, when, when Isaiah builds this type of artwork, he uses outdoor plaster, so it falls apart. And for the longest time, this entire building was covered in black netting. And it looks like there, there's some stuff right there, and they, they maybe they added some uh, something to make the art last longer. But I, I heard that they were able to sell, but they're not able to uh, demo it. I don't know, but it looks beautiful. It's I mean, it's crazy. Well, uh oh, zoning notice. This is it. Oh, they're demoing it. 
They're demoing the building. They are demoing the building. Wow. Oh shit. So let's let's take a moment to uh, remember the bride has many suitors. Suitors. Huh. Oh, I know you. They're knocking this down? They're knocking this down? That's horrible. I know, I know, I know. That, it's, like, that's almost as big as his exhibit in South yeah. It's not Shit, man, it might be bigger. Yeah. With the square footage? Yeah. Huh. Ain't that nice. It's always nice to see people. Yeah, so this whole area, if you look around, it's all new construction. Which... It's crazy because there was always a lot of open space in Old City. A lot of like lots. And they're all kind of just going away. This was for a while, this was like an apartment building called the, I think, the Banksy. And for a while, I was like, is it a Banksy work of art? But it wasn't. It's just the name of the building. Nice parking garage. You know, five years ago, I never would have walked in that little garage. I'd be too nervous. But something I learned from doing this channel is nobody's paying attention to you. You can pretty much just do what the fuck, with whatever, whatever you want. Try not to curse. <laughs> and uh, I feel if you can go in somewhere and not disturb anything, I don't I don't see how that's bad. It's also like kind of cool that you can show history in the making. Shit, I'm parked all the way down Target. Oh, I gotta go back. I, I usually park here. And I, I'm seven blocks up the other way. Why did I do that? To continue this scooter ride. Keep going. So my plan is to just upload this and put this up on YouTube tonight. The day I filmed this. So I filmed this. This. When. Uh. Monday, July 17th, it is right now 7.24 p.m. This is one of the first murals painted by the Philadelphia Mural Commission. And the building itself has got knocked down. This wall is still up. Some, some thick had graffitied over it. But this is the first, one of the first murals that the... Uh, anti-graffiti commission that they used graffiti artists like so if you got caught graffiti what they would do is they would make you paint murals and that was one of the first murals and i think it's changed now the the mural commission the way it works in philadelphia now is they'll have a mural like let's say they have a mural on kensington ave and they'll have everybody come out but anybody who wants to come out, you can come out and paint a little bit of that mural. So that way you could take a little bit of uh, pride in your, um, in, your, in your mural, in your neighborhood. So if anybody ever messes with that mural, 
people will say, yo, get off that mural, I painted that. So that's something they do now. And I, I don't know if they really, I really don't know, I, you never hear a graffiti artist getting captured or anything like that. So, well listen, I'm gonna wrap this up here. My scooter's dead and I parked seven blocks this way. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Hey, Cap, I enjoyed the unedited scoot. I, uh, like I said, I do this like once every few months. Just, and you know what's amazing? I'll, I'll do this again in a few other months and the city will look completely different. Now, some of the stuff will remain the same. But, you know, that, that garage I just walked in, that's going to be, that's going to be finished. I'm not going to be able to walk into the garage. Um, I'm sure some of the retail stores we saw, some of them might close. So, in Philadelphia, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing so much construction on this side of the river. It's crazy. It's just, I, I just don't get how... We keep building all this stuff. Like, who the hell's moving here? Because the population of the city is declining. It's not. It's not increasing, but yet we keep building apartments and condos. But if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. I have nine t-shirts that are available for sale. I am going to update my store very soon. Uh, the following shirts are probably going away. The no good Nick shirt. Uh, it's, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, no, I don't really talk about no good Nicks no more. So if you want to buy a no good Nick shirt, I buy it now because I feel like it's going to be gone very soon. I'm only allowed to have 10 shirts on my store. And I think there's going to be a It's Always Fun and 301 shirt coming soon. And something else. So if you're going to buy, buy a No Goodness shirt, now is the time. Um, you can also book me on Cameo. I can wish somebody happy birthday. I can make fun of your fantasy football league. I can, whatever you need me to do, I can do. Um, What else is there? T-shirts, merch. Oh, if you want to buy a ticket at, for any event coming up, not just in Philly, anywhere. If you download SeatGeek and use promo code the Philly Captain, the Philly Captain, no spaces, all lower cases. I can save you twenty dollars off your first order, fifty dollars or more. And uh, t-shirts oh i have a patreon if you want to help me out that's another way you get a patreon you get bonus videos early previews and postcards and uh if you want to watch my live streams i don't keep them up very long i uh just keep them up for a few weeks and i take them down but if you want access to all my live streams all you gotta do is click that join button and join me live on youtube I actually would have made this back with plenty of battery power to spare if I remembered I parked on 7th Street. Well, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll sail with you later. Toodles!